Hi, so it's Dan Taylor here from Apps Events, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Andrew from Classlink. How are you doing, Andrew? I'm very good, Dan. Thanks for having me on this morning. Great. So uh, Apps Events are a partner with Classlink. We're very enthusiastic about it. We've got a lot of interest in it from the international schools we work with, and we're working closely with the Classlink team to, to bring this to international schools. So what we wanted to do today is to give a quick demo of Classlink. Andrew's going to go through some of the main features, how the single sign-on works, how the SIS sync works, and how it can really help you as a school integrate systems without any coding, very much plug and play. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to get involved with Classlink. So, Andrew, do you want to take it away from here? Yeah, certainly. And thanks for the introduction. So, um, a little bit about me. I've been working for Classlink for over two years now. Uh, I look after our international sales and working with Apps Events, we're delighted to uh, present Classlink to you today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what Classlink is. Uh, we are a cloud-based solution uh, that basically connects educators and students with their classroom, the curriculum, and each other in richer, more powerful ways. Um, as leading advocates for open data standards, we offer you instant access to all your applications and files with single sign-on. We help you streamline your class rostering, automate account provisioning, and provide you with actionable analytics, which is what I'm showing you on the screen here. Yeah. So uh, obviously, Classlink can be broken down into four kind of areas that you can bring on. Uh, the first is how we help students and staff. And this is what we call our launch pad. It's our single sign-on platform, which you can yeah. sign in using your Google credentials. And I'll show you this in a short moment. Uh, you're also able to uh, ensure all users have some form of multi-factor, even those youngest children. Uh, in your schools, and they don't need additional devices to do it. And from there, they can have instant access to all their applications and files. Those analytics we spoke about, those actionable analytics, uh, gives decision makers real-time utilization, re real utilization data of all your applications uh, and instructional productivity and software tools. And we can dive yeah. into that a little bit later today. So any questions so far, Dan? No, that's all clear. Let's get into it. Okay, well, let's focus on those two areas first, and uh, I'm going to show you how you will log in. So Classlink's uh, cloud-based. It can be an application on iOS or Android, uh, or you can access it through the web browser. These are two schools that we're currently working with here, and as you can see, they're using their Google credentials to sign on. Uh, yeah. You can either type them in or you can just click Sign with Google. You can also see other options to sign in and there are a multitude of options for you to choose as an international school. So yeah. I'm going to show you how you sign in using the quick card. And the quick card is usually some form of QR code that we give to the smallest children. They don't have to, therefore, remember a username and password. It's very easy for them to be able to log in. And I'm going to launch into my demo platform here and uh, quick the QR code, quick click the QR code. I'm just, I've got one saved on my phone, but I always stress you don't need to have it saved on your phone. Sure. Uh, it, it can be uh, one that you have printed off for the children. Just hold the QR code up to the screen. Uh, and then you are presented with the option, if you wanted to, of having some form of multi-factor for students. Now, multi-factor for students is always something that is raised by schools. And for the youngest children, you could make it as simple as possible just by having a random section of images and the child just comes along and picks their favorite image. And that works. Yeah, which on any is great because it's always a bone, a bone of contention. People say, should we have multi-factor for students? Obviously, if possible, yes. But the reality of doing that with, with passwords and authenticating devices is, is very, very tough. And so most schools don't do it. So doing this simpler version might be an option for some schools that want to incorporate it. Yeah, and that option there, that can be anything. That can be uh, layered. So your youngest children can have an image. Your older children can have a PIN number. Your staff can have their Google authenticators. Uh, you can use whatever uh, authenticator you want to use uh, for different groups. So yep. it really is, it's not a one-size-fits-all because we know education doesn't work in that way. And yep. then there's lots of features on the Launchpad, and I'm not going to go into it in too much detail today, apart from if you are interested, contact Dan and the team and we can arrange a full demonstration. But a user then comes along. They're able to access all the applications that you've assigned to them. So it's personalized. It's tailored to that particular user or that group or that OU. And they click on it, the application and it logs them in. And it's that simple. So it can, it can uh, basically support any application, website, URL. You can display the information in folders, 
you know, so admins might want HR folders, payroll folders, uh, pension information, whatever it is they need, you can put any digital resource on here. And that's, yep. that's as simple as the launch pad needs to be. Okay, cool. Got it. So, so that's the launch pad. Uh, there are a million and one other features, some communication tools. Um, but what I'm going to dive into next is the analytics, which was the next area that we were looking at on the demonstration. So analytics, as I said, it gives you real-time utilization, utilization data, which I can never say, as you can tell. Uh, and when I click on the analytics, you'll notice what basically happens in here. You can choose a date range to display the information. This is a display, uh, a, a demo platform. So I'm not quite sure about the numbers, but it gives you how many users are logging in. But this is the bit that leaders particularly like. They like to see all the digital applications that the school or group of schools are using and how many launches and how long people are spending in it. So, for example, if your favorite teacher tells you this is a really, really useful application, you can actually go in and say, actually, that is actually factually correct. Or, you know, coming right down and these, this is a demo. So, it's you know, I'm going to use our own roster server. Over a year, we've not had many launches of it. So is that a piece of technology that we want to be truly continuing to subscribe to? You know, if you want to dive a bit deeper, look at costs. You've got the ability to plug in how much you're paying for any digital application, how many licenses you've got. And ClassLink, because of the way they're accessing those resources, can actually tell you how many unique users are using them. So sure. if you want real-time utilization data at a high level, you've got every digital application, policy, procedure, you know, that you want to share with users, you can actually see how users are engaging with that technology. Got it. So A, you've got high level uh, that we're showing you. You can go down to individual schools. So if you've got three schools and you want to compare how they're using technology, um, you know, I've just chosen three, but you can see how many logins, how many unique logins. But then you can start to see, are there any patterns involved in how they're using technology that's being presented to them? So you Done. can see... You know, if you've invested heavily in Google Drive, but you can't see it being used effectively, you can start to plan CPD. You can start to look at a bit more information. If Great. you want to look app specific, you can click on any particular application and you can see the top users, recent users, uh, et cetera, et cetera, who's using it, when they're using it, which schools are using that particular application. So you can go very high level. You can go group level. You can go school level. You can go uh, even down to the individuals if you wanted to. So if I show you, just as an example, what I've been doing with you today, you can see how I've logged in. I logged in on Chrome. I used the QR code to log in. It gives you my IP address. And you can also see what applications. So I clicked on Renzulu Learning earlier on. So it really is in real time. It gives you live information. And now I'm in analytics. So you can see every digital application that a user is accessing. And it tells you the time I've accessed it too. So... How is that useful? Well, you can understand how users are actually utilizing those resources. Uh, and you can also, from a safeguarding and well-being perspective, make sure users aren't doing things that they shouldn't be doing in the middle of the night, for example. That's another example of how schools sometimes tie the analytics into the safety and well-being of their uh, cohorts, too. Yeah. So that's something to think about. Just uh, one other feature that I'm going to show you uh, on the launch pad. Got it. And this is and this is really uh, important for you to be able to see. So you can click on My Files. And from here, uh, if you've got your Google Drive connected, you can access those drives instantly as well. So it's one place the user logs in with a QR code, and they've got instant access to everything. So yeah. it really does make life simple for them. So um, obviously, I've shown you very high level there how the launch pad and how the analytics work. The only other area I really wanted to show you today uh, was my classes. And this is linked to analytics because we take the information from the school information system. We know which students, which teachers are en enrolled in which classes. Yeah. You, can you can quickly look at a, a specific class. If you're a teacher, you can add applications in here that will go to all the users in that class. You can also see which students. But this is linked to analytics. A teacher has the ability to see these kids logged in. You know, if I look at last week, to give you a bit more data, they logged into ClassLink on these days. And if there was any discrepancy over the work that they did, they can click on any particular user and see what that user actually did as well. And Great. this is also presented to the user too. So there's no secrets with ClassLink. It's all clear. It's all something that uh, contributes to the school, helping the educational outcomes of young people. Got it. Okay. So 
that is the my class section. The only other uh, area that I really want to dive into today, uh, at a very high level, uh, and, and obviously I'll take on board any questions you've got, Dan, is the one yeah. sync and roster server. So before yeah, we move on, that. any questions? No, that's great. It's super clear. Uh, again, if you want to, if you want a private demo, get in touch. Myself and Andrew will jump on the call with you anytime. But yeah, let's take a look at the sync. Okay. Yeah. So one sync is another uh, component of ClassLink. It's all included. Uh, it's a comprehensive account provisioning platform, and it's designed to synchronize uh, the synchronization between your student information system, or as you can see on the screen there, uh, multiple sources we can bring in, and we can push that out to you know as you can see on there ad azure but also specifically for you guys that google environment and google classroom too now this, so, is, this is a big this is a big thing which because like you know the most popular student information systems for international schools are power school veracross and sims a lot yep. of other ones isams and you know for british schools they often use the, the you know the various british ones mm -hmm. um but you um work with most of the student information systems if not all of the ones that international schools will, will come across Correct. And we have different tools to be able to extract that data, either an API connection, some form yep. of CSV export. Uh, and we've got different, uh, we, we work with what we call, uh, you know, open data standards. So we bring that data in in a certain format, and then we are able to process that in the OneSync server. And the OneSync server is where all the magic happens. You can strip fields, you can, you know, take elements of different fields, you can transform data, you can tree print pre-transform all that information uh, and then you can obviously protect the data at source uh, and then push it out to those different destinations so if veracross for example said your school name is code 100 uh, for example you can change it to my school and that yeah. still doesn't change your source data but when you push it out to those different destinations it will be in exactly the format you want it to be Got and it. you'll notice it's two-way so if there's a change in this particular area here it will automatically share updates and correlate that information to make sure that the, the destinations are always accurate. Okay. Another key feature is it will disable users when they uh, leave or uh, are no longer involved with your school. Um, one key point to note is that data isn't class links. We don't own it, therefore we don't delete it. We only ever disable that and you must have your own policies in place as to how long you keep that data for. In international schools in particular, we see students there one term, the parents have to fly back home, uh, do some work elsewhere, and then they rejoin again, you know, at the next term. So we don't delete the data. That's a policy for the school to look at. Got it. But we see this as a really key component. And lots of schools, when they're looking at ClassSync, will say, I want the single sign-on, and I want to focus on that one sync piece, because that's the bit that's causing us the headaches. Any manual work is completely removed. And how does it work with the sync the other way, the sync from Google to the SIS? Um, in what way would you be uh, wanting that? Like, does, does it reflect like if, if, if people will move, um, change class rosters in classroom, is, is there an ability to put that back to the student information system or not? Or is it just, is it just a one-way sync from the student information system to, to classroom? Uh, the the off-the-shelf product is a one-way sync. So we would take so if they change classes and that source of truth is Power School or Veracross and they move from one to two, for example, it will automatically update all those different destinations. Got it. Okay, cool. So but with roster server, you know, Google Classroom, um, so so one way of looking at this is one sync is your internal account provisioning tool. Okay. The roster server looks very similar, but does a very different job. This is where we pull your data and allow you to share what data fields you need to share in whatever format with those external vendors. So one sync is internal, roster server is external. Yeah. And we use the either one roster open data stands come in and get that those data for giving them access to, or we can create custom exports for those uh, vendors who need it in a certain format. And apps like Andrew, we just lost you for a minute there. Could you just just repeat just just repeat that section? I lost your your signal cut out for like about a minute. No, just, just ah. maybe thirty seconds. Just just cover the last thirty seconds. Okay, so one thing to think about is one sync is for your internal resources, uh, yeah. those destinations. The roster server looks very similar, but it does um, a very different job. It actually shares your school's data securely and safely and delivers to any publisher uh, using the one roster data standards. Uh, we can do that using an API connection, or we can even give them a custom export. The only criteria for that is that the vendor must support some form of SFTP transfer. And again, that should be a minimum requirement if you're sending valuable school data uh, to vendors, which can be equally 
uh, hacked. So we would insist sure. that any vendor that a school is using meets that requirement at the very least. Got it. So, so the roster server, again, ensures that when something changes in Veracross, not only your internal accounts are all updated, but all of your external accounts. So as you mentioned earlier, Dan, if a child changes class, it will reflect that with, you know, uh, Mathletics, with uh, Google Drive, with, with whatever needs to be updated, it will be an automatic process. Uh, likewise, at the end of a school year, when all the students leave or change or roll over, it will update them all automatically. And because you app assign applications to the launch pad, when they also change and you say, right, all year threes need this data, when they update from year two to year three, their launch pad will automatically be updated too. So it takes all that heavy lifting out of uh, a school's end of year processes, as well as all that manual work during the lifetime of the year as well. Got it. So all in all, uh, ClassLink can do you a number of different features. Uh, the single sign-on, making life easy, accessible for absolutely everybody with instant access to all your apps and files. Those actionable analytics, and we can go into more detail about how that fits together with the different devices, etc. The internal and external accounts that you need to create and share. And finally, uh, one key part of ClassLink is we give all parents a free platform. So if you have to communicate with parents, give them the back end of all the different applications you're using, share uniform policies, dinner money links. Again, a parent just has one place to access. And that's all free of charge for parents. So, uh, you know, it gives you one place to log into for absolutely all users connected to your school. And finally, the public portal is just an area where you can display the uh, privacy policies and how the school is sharing data with those external vendors and what they, how they process that data too. So again, helps you comply with all the uh, rules around data privacy and protection. And Got happy it. to go into that in much more detail if needed. Great. I think that's a really great overview. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. And again, please get in touch. We can jump into any of these topics, give you a quick demo. Uh, we can give you a, you know, a free trial if you want to take a look at things. And then we can uh, take it from there. So, Andrew, thanks very much for your time today. No problem at all, Dan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.